God is limited. I didn't make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. God is limited. For I know, this is God talking, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. The only way I can <laughs> justify this particular text and where most of you who are watching me, where you are in some area of our life is because God is limited. That is, that is got to be it. Why? Because God says, for well, I know the plans that I have for you. And for a lot of us, the plans that God has for us, those plans are not happening in our lives. So I'm going to say it again. God is limited. And why is he limited? He's limited because of you. If you don't catch this, you're not going to catch the message. God, listen to me. For I know the plans I have. God says, I, I have plans to prosper you. And so you'd have gotten some terrible marriages. You'd have gotten some terrible relationships. You'd have made some crazy financial decisions. You ain't living the way you're supposed to be living. Your health is not where it's supposed to be. Your relationships are not. Somebody, listen to me. Some, it, it's only two people in a relationship, you and God. And so it has to be that if God is Alpha and Omega, if God is the beginning and the end, if God is all powerful and all knowing, the only way I can explain why your life don't look like Jeremiah 29 is because you put limits on God. If this text is right and God's got a plan for you and you got all kind of stuff on your vision board, but some of the stuff ain't happening, you are limiting God. It might be right in heaven, but on earth, God got a whole lot of boundaries. God got a whole bunch of limits, and they all start with you. God is limited. Why? Because he got all these plans for you. He wants you to prosper. He does not want to harm you. He's got plans to give you hope and a future, and you don't, it's been 20 years since you've been a Christian, 10 years since you've been a Christian, and you're not living this. You are, take the limits off of God. Take the boundaries off God. Take the chains off God. Come on, let, I dare you, free God up and let him be the creator in your life. I dare you to free him up. I dare you to take him out that prison you put him in. I dare you to take him out of that, 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 those walls that you erected around him. I dare you. I dare you to take that cage off of God. And I dare you. I dare you let God be God. You know God. You know God. You know God, and you done put the same limits on God that non-believers put on them. The reason why most of you can't make your vision boards happen, the reason why most of you can't get to Jeremiah 29, 11, is because God's got a plan, but your anxiety is interrupting that plan. Oh, come on, your fear is interrupting that plan. Your trepidation is interrupting that plan. And no how, matter how big the situation is, no matter how small the situation is, you ain't studying the situation because you know that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And you know that whatever you lose, amen, whatever you lose, God got something bigger, God got something better. The Bible says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. I want to go over that one again. Amen. Because you've been told I had a baby out of wedlock. I don't deserve to go to God. I, you know, I was on drugs. You know, I was on alcohol. You know, whatever the substance was. Amen. I, I, I committed adultery. Amen. I was abusive. Amen. Whatever it was. Somebody told you that because you were those things, I didn't grow up in church. You know, I haven't always done the right thing. I sold drugs. I spent time in jail. I was a murderer. The Bible declares, hallelujah, if... You need wisdom. Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you from your, of your past. He will not rebuke you for the things you did in the past. He said he will not rebuke you for asking. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Knock, 
and the door shall be open. Seek and you shall find. God is like, who told you that? And I'm sitting here telling you today that many of you have been listening to the devil. Many of you have been listening to people who've been used by the devil. And it's time for you to hear from God. The generous God who will not rebuke you for asking. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you shall find. So you do me a favor. From this day forward, don't you ever say what God will and will not do for you. Don't you ever tell God how he feels about you. Don't you ever do that. Don't tell God how he feel about you. Don't tell God uh, 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 what he will do for you and what he won't do. Don't you tell God that. God knows how he feels about you. God knows what he wants to do for you. And you don't have the right to tell. You don't have the right to limit God. You don't have the right to tell God what he is and is not going to do for you. Just ask. Stop doing all of that. Stop putting yourself through all that. Just simply ask. And you let God decide how much he loves you. You let God decide how much he wants to do for you. You let God decide how he wants to deal with your past. You let God decide that. Don't you decide for him. And let me tell you something. I don't care, I don't care what. If you being pulled away from your dreams and goals, it can't be right. You can't tell me it's right that God's got all of these promises for you, that God got this life for you. You can't tell me it's right that God got all these plans and you didn't follow somebody else's plan for your life and it ain't taking you in the direction that God had. You can't tell me that's right. That job didn't call you and told you they about to fire you. You got two weeks left. They about to get rid of you. I, in the name of Jesus, I've been there, done that. I've been there, done that. If God let him take it from you, it means he got something bigger and better. He got something greater. You're not hearing what I'm telling you. I ain't telling you what I heard. I ain't telling you what I read. I'm telling you what I've been through. I'm telling you that there are people who fired me. And God says, son, hurry up and pack your stuff and leave. Because I got something better for you, son. Don't whine about it. Don't cry about it. As a matter of fact, when they fire you, you better get the the best sleep you've ever got in your life because you're going to need it when you wake up because I got something for you that's better than that. Hurry up and get out that relationship. Hurry up and get out of it. Hurry up and leave that job. They doing you a favor. They not hurting you. They blessing you. And you got to be at peace because you know that somehow God's going to show up, God's going to show out, and God's going to turn it around. You have made it clear in the word what your plans are for us. And so if those plans are not happening, Lord, we have limited you. How dare us limit the King of kings and the Lord of lords. How dare us put shackles on your feet, Lord. How dare us put chains on your hands, Lord. How dare us, Lord. How dare us limit you in our life. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. To take off the shackles and let you run free in our life, Lord. No, truly no limits, Lord. Truly no boundaries, Father. Type amen if you agree. Click here to watch this important message.